Shantu sir. Uh, it was really an uh, insightful uh, learning. Uh, now, I will just take two minutes of your uh, dear esteemed speakers. I'll, I would just like to uh, give a token of respect to Mr. Shantu K. Roy as he has taken up his time from this crude time uh, he has been uh, having. Uh, so, I would like to uh, call upon Yushika to presently uh, take a, uh, bring the memento and uh, our director, sir, to present the memento to uh, Mr. Prashanto K. Roy. to call you on that. But you have already told what was to be told. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I take this opportunity to um, uh, say Shuvo Nagavarsu. Actually, today is uh, Bengali New Year and also New Year in Assam and uh, South India and several other places. Uh, thank you, uh, Jaipuria Business uh, School of Business, uh, for inviting me here. Uh, August uh, panel on the dais. August audience, uh, can you please uh, start the presentation? <coughs> uh, while uh, pla uh, planning yesterday, that what what should be told uh, or what I sh uh, because you, UPNRM the program I am representing umbrella program in natural resource management that is a program, but some generic uh, topics also I have taken up uh, for presenting this program. Uh, in our school days, we were. Uh, fan of uh, Rocky, uh, Sylvester Stallone. So there is one famous uh, dialogue, there is no tomorrow. So with that, uh, uh, I would like to start the topic. Because uh, while I was uh, uh, taking, uh, preparing the presentation, I saw that uh, three things are there. One is technology, one is inclusion, and another is natural resource management. That is why, and that is where I want to uh, confine myself. The agribusiness industry is a five trillion. This is a McKenzie report. The uh, what is very important uh, that enhancing food production while adding value to the entire farm and folk supply chain. This is a technology. Technology, uh, Mr. Roy has already told a lot of things. Digital India. The uh, conference has been named uh, on Digital India. So digital push is there. So that is a technology. In the inaugural session also a lot of speakers told yeah, that technology is uh, very important for this uh, financial uh, for this uh, financial inclusion topic. So, but this uh, technology should actually add value to our entire supply chain of this uh, livelihoods, agribusiness, rural population, uh, market, fork to farm. Uh, normally we tell that uh, farm to folk, but now it is from folk to farm. The folk is deciding that what should be in the farm. So all these, the technology is very important. And now artificial intelligence is coming up. So we have a lot of labors. So all those interactions will come up. The technology is not only that uh, transferring of money through banks. So it is much more than that. So those technological interventions are very much required for this uh, financial inclusion topic. I will not take much of your time. The second uh, topic is on inclusion, and I will restrict myself to only the financial inclusion. The very important uh, points here are the affordable costs and uh, for the disadvantaged and low income segments. Uh, what is affordable cost? Uh, that is debatable. What is affordable for you? What is affordable for me? Or what is affordable for uh, any other person? I'll tell you, I'll just take a minute to tell. Uh, while I was doing my PhD in, uh, with the tribal people of West Bengal, uh, so uh, I asked them what to do with your, uh, uh, about your uh, food habits, uh, what do you farm. It was an economic analysis of dairy farming. So the person they told, uh, it was a shogor, one tribe is their shogor. Uh, he told that uh, uh, we go to jungle, we take potato from there, collect potato from there uh, for two days. So uh, I told that you are not going today. He told, no, I have enough potato for today. So I told, what you will do tomorrow? So he told that uh, it will just end up today, so I will again go tomorrow to collect potato for next two, three days. So we are talking about uh, savings account. 
they don't save food. So we have really a lot to go, actually. Uh, so uh, this affordable costs and all those things, we have to take care. So uh, while I'm telling, I'm not cynical that we should not do, we should definitely do, because only doing can, uh, we can, only by doing we can reach there. But we have a long way to go. On the natural resource uh, uh, aspect, the most important thing is that uh, our uh, rural population or the uh, livelihood of the agribusiness uh, dependent population, uh, there should be business models. Uh, and that, be because uh, for financial inclusion, there should be finance somewhere. So there should be some economic activity, because there should be money, uh, because what uh, otherwise what will get transferred, what will be saved. So for that, there should be business model. And that business model should be dependent on the natural resources because uh, those people, they are dependent on natural resource. Their economic activity, livelihood, they are dependent on natural resource. So thus to achieve the pro-poor economic growth, uh, business model should be built on the natural resources assets of the poor. And this is very important and this is the third year. Uh, this is uh, natural resource. Uh, business model building on natural resources. I would like to take three minutes of your time to show a, a short film on the umbrella program in natural resource management, what we are trying to develop, uh, livelihood models or business models on the natural resources. Uh, can you please uh, play that? Only when people at the grassroots plan for them, manage access to resources and training, and work as a team to make them happen. Like these banana farmers from Bhagalpur, Bihar. After shifting to tissue culture banana farm, they have seen change arrive. <laughs> Bhagalpur is a major banana growing area in India. Many cultivators here are small and marginal farmers. It became tough for them to cope with the losses that arise out of traditional banana farming practices. Indian Rural Association, a local NGO, came to their support with an innovative project under UBNR. Tissue culture के लिए हम लोगों को जो है कि बैंक से लोन आसानी से नहीं मिल रहा था और इस संस्था के द्वारा हम लोगों को बड़ी आसानी से लोन के रूप में 55,000 रुपया एकर के हिसाब से दिया गया है और यह इसमें ज्यादा मुनाफा होने चांस है। Earlier, the pseudo stem of banana used to be a waste item for farmers. Now they are using it for vermi composting. The vermi compost units use 70% of the pseudo stem of banana, 30% cow dung, and 5 kilograms of earthworm. <laughs> The project has also established a dedicated poly house and a net house for hardening tissue culture planting, along with a demonstration plot with drip irrigation. Change has arrived in Bhagalpur's banana land. Banana waste-based vermicomposting is replacing the use of chemical fertilizers. Soil and water is getting conserved through drip irrigation. Improved better quality banana production and the intercrop is bringing home better returns. To top it all, women of the village are becoming self-reliant. They always like to sing, but this time along, they are singing the song of change. Irrigation in banana. So these are also technologies. So technological intervention should be made for uh, increasing the efficiency in the whole supply chain. 
Then what is the financial inclusion? They told them, uh, one of the person who were telling, uh, though it may be scripted, but it is evident across the project that asani se nahi mil raha paisa. So there is a finclu uh, financial inclusion component. But very important component is the third component, uh, that is the natural resource management component. It, uh, that is the conservation of the soil. Uh, because the livelihoods, ultimately, the business model will develop on the raw material, and that raw material are, the, are uh, in the natural resource uh, for those people who, whom we want to get into our financial inclusion, uh, in, into our financial inclusion. So, uh, uh, this was the gist of our um, uh, gist of what I wanted to tell. Uh, this uh, program is a small pilot of 600 crore by NABAD, and it is uh, running across the uh, country in uh, 320 projects are there now across 21 states and one uh, union territory. Why I'm telling small? As a project, it is quite big in itself because it is one of the first experiments with. Uh, loan grant program in natural resource management. Why I am telling small? Because 600 crore is nothing for a country. We have to go to 60,000 crore, 6 lakh crore with this kind of programs where financial inclusion is there, technology intervention is there, and where we can conserve the natural resource because that will build the business model of the poor and then it will generate money and e in the economy for them and then the actual financial inclusion, economic empowerment will happen. And uh, so, and uh, this is why I uh, started with that there is no tomorrow, we have to start it today. And uh, next slide. So I thank you all uh, with this and uh, I'm open for questions. And also I again extend my gratitude to the business school, Jaipuria Business School of Business for inviting me. It is very important because the capacity building with, will help in uh, making things more affordable to the poor because his, his or her or his capacity will increase to get that uh, loan or whatever. So uh, maybe I, I don't know the definition because I have left uh, my study after doing my PhD. I am a practitioner now. I am still unlearning. But uh, for me, affordability, what can be afforded by, by that particular person? Okay, I have put the question because I am doing lending. What is interest rate? Kya hai? And second thing, I will be harping on that, what is the business model? Because in uh, in certain that we are only uh, financing a cow, but it should be, we should be financing a project. So that makes the, enter, uh, the business also more uh, robust and it will give more return. So uh, business model ko we or hum robust kar sakte, affordability hum bada sakte hai, by those factors also, not only containing the cost, but also increasing the income. So dono pe humko kaam karna padega, but we can have one to one chat. I will give you my card. We can have one to one chat and I can get much more insight from your study also. The unbanked, where all the national banks are involved, essentially private banks don't do much work in this. They talk more, they don't deliver on ground. The national banks, even national banks at the grassroots levels, they look at a lot of collateral, they don't look at a lot of security. Now, recently, I had an experience with one of the largest banks of India who wanted to address. 1 million artisans in Bengal. So they made a presentation of what will they deliver if and if the government helps in this 1 million artisans getting registered with the bank. In their entire two hours presentation, there was nothing that was on the plate. So I then turned around and asked the chairman that Akito, you have already reached the top of your career. You still need a further promotion to RBI for this 10 lakh people that you want to do. What have you? What are you delivering to this poor? So, I think in the policy point of view, the government, the banking sector, they need to come up with much clearer policies in terms of what are the benefits they are going to give. Yes, security is required, etc., etc. But against security, what kind of benefits are they willing to give? And therefore. I think, from policy point of view, a very clear-cut direction has to come from the top, which has not come and it will never come, I presume, but it may also, one doesn't know. Uh, that one, two, three, four, five, these are the five benefits which I'm going to give in the form of subsidies. So direct cash transfer, you don't do direct cash transfer, but you give subsidies through the banks so that people are helped to become entrepreneurs or they, you know, 
this is sustained. It, it is sustained over a longer period of time. I think that's the point which needs to be seen. It is not about 18% because if you remove the non-banking sector from there, you know, my son may be required to be admitted in a hospital and I need immediately 100,000 rupees. Nobody is going to fund me. Only the local money lender is going to fund me at maybe 23% interest, but I have no options. So these are the challenges at that grassroots level. I think government needs to come up with very clear-cut policy. Because talking about digitization and from 18 million we have gone to 44 million and tomorrow 80 million is not solving any purpose at the grassroots level. They remain the same. And, and therefore that's the point which perhaps we need to come up with some solution or maybe some advice for the government. That what is it that they need to do to make this financial inclusion rectify at the grassroots level. That's the challenge. Because most of it is in the urban centers. Rural, Areas are still far away. Yes, you were right. Ultimately, kiske paise se capitalization hoga. So all these these are all um, uh, parallel arguments. But you were right that to reach the people for about whom I was talking uh, in my affordability thing piece, that they don't save food. Where is the savings account relevant? How is the savings account relevant for them? So uh, and we have to reach them because they are our citizen. Uh, they are our fellow citizen. So for them, we have to do all these interventions that you are telling. So it is our moral duty and responsibility as a countryman. A very heartfelt thanks to uh, Mr. Prashik Basu for taking up all the questions and on the insightful and very learning session from him. I would uh, take a proud privilege to uh, introduce Mr. Atul Bhatnagar, uh, our next speaker. Mr. Atul Bhatnagar, a graduate from IIT Kanpur in Mechanical Engineering and a postgraduate from IIM Calcutta, is currently working in skill development, banking and